Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Wish you a very happy, very special start to your week on this beautiful Monday, this Cryptocurrency Monday. As always, want to be wishing you well, want to be wishing you the best of the best. So let's waste no more time because Bitcoin's actually had a few moves in the overnight session. So let's get a live team right here, right now. As uh, starting off with the daily, you can see, oh, by the way, I believe that I have fixed the focus issue on my camera. So please do let me know if that works out. But as far as the daily goes, nothing's really changed right here. Um, we are still sandwiched between the Cyan 89 exponential and the Yellow 21 exponential. Actually, actually finding support in the last night's dump uh, right on the 10 simple so to me, as long as we're as as long as we're between these moving averages, nothing's changing from the medium time frame perspective. In order to in order to really judge the lower time frame perspective, we need to go down to like you know a four hour dollar time frame. But for the daily right here, again, as long as we're below thirty nine forty or above, actually thirty eight ten now, as it is rising pretty rapidly. I don't consider anything new has really changed. Uh, if we do break to the upside, of course, above 39.40, I would be looking for, to a quick move uh, towards the past prior highs, right around about 4,200 and probably beyond over time. Um, by the same token, if we do break to the downside uh, below 38.10, I would be looking for a move to about 30, uh, what is it, 36.50, somewhere right around here. Yeah, 3650, 3700, and then probably beyond to the to the you know the the low of the range down around uh, 3350, 3400 ish area. So again, it is getting to crunch time as this area becomes more and more confined. It becomes more and more likely to actually break out. And it's just been an unspoken rule of Bitcoin that we get one move per week, like like one actual move per week. And the last actual move that we had was March 5th, so exactly one week ago. So there we go. By the way, that does remind me. I do need to make the official announcement. Oh my God, I completely forgot to. I completely forgot to announce it, but it is officially the one-year anniversary of Crown's Crypto Cave. Um, wow, what a fucking journey! Oh my God, absolutely incredible. And uh, man, it's 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 so it's so cool because I feel like the people who I've known here um since the beginning or even like during the very early days like there's a great camaraderie between those people and especially you know and also the people who join in later but my god man it's been uh it's been quite it's been quite the journey so i do want to say massive massive thank you of course i am having to say on all my programs as well to say thank you um but i always want to remind people that these programs are not designed for 99.9 .9 of people out there they are designed for more die hard more gung-ho type people who want to learn how to trade learn how to do these sorts of things in typically this fashion of doing it as a living now of course not everyone who does it or not everyone who enters in the program is going to be a professional trader i understand that i'm not going to be the arbiter of that but i do want to make it very abundantly clear to anyone who's thinking about it if you aren't completely in probably not for you my free materials are probably going to get you 99.9% .9 of the way that you want to get so so take advantage of that you don't need to you don't need to invest in uh, in a program like this if you're not really planning on doing something like that uh, meaning doing this as a profession anyways the code is oh my god completely forgot to do it is actually uh, let me just type it out it's year let's do it right here year 20 there you go okay great now we can get rid of that and let's actually get back to the actual chart so there we go okay um yes so while we're here on the daily let's actually check in on the oscillators we see daily rsi is just snaking around right in the midst of the range not really telling us anything too much if i had to say some yeah we are fucking around we, we are technically tr you know right below the exponential right now doesn't mean all that much um it's really going to be the lower time frames that are going to you know have the clues uh daily stokes are up that would certainly be a more bullish thing but if we go over the two day and three day they will be down uh, we can do that for verification process later G a daily jewel signaling mm, i mean it will begin to resistance but I, I don't really consider that like a i don't consider it a signal or anything like that uh two day two day did we just put another one in um in stone last night no we did not we put in one tonight so yeah we are coming down on this guy uh still angled downwards and yes each and every time that we actually have crossed down in the two day little uh stokes it has produced some pretty nasty moves to the downside uh, catching all the tops of the past year. This is your. Uh, this was your. What was it? Your May top at ten thousand last year. Your double top at twelve thousand in uh, February last year. Your top at eighty four hundred before moving down to six thousand last year. And yeah, once again we're you know we're crossing down. Sorry, the time before that was actually even from a lower uh, a lower a lower space. And that was the uh, the top at 4,100 in early January. The time before that was really the breakage of 6,000. So again, it has had some good historical relevancy of this, but you know, still actually holding above the uh, the 10 simple on the two-day digital time frame. So again, higher time frames are actually you know higher time frames are obviously bearish. Nothing's really changed from that perspective. But as far as the more immediate 
moves, that is, I would say, more neutral than anything. I don't really have a strong opinion here. Of course, whenever you're in an overall an overall market trend, which is a downtrend, I'm going to go with the downside. I'm always going to be bearish in a bear market, um, so I would be bearish here. But hey, if Bitcoin does take out 39.40 to the upside, there's you know I I really don't see too much stopping you from really like 43, 4400, um, if that were to happen. Uh, there are plenty of tries over the weekend, all rejected. But uh, while we're here on the three-day little time frame, three-day little stokes coming down. Same thing that we saw on the two-day, actually. You know, you, you actually even have a trend line forming right here. Now, don't you go in all the way back from uh, September of last year, governing all of the last highs in that area. And each and every time that we actually have had a cross, again, you know, same sort of thing. Uh, actually even rejecting getting into the bullish control zone on the three-day stokes, which is important to me. So... To me, this 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 is saying pressure on, although you know we will the bulls will have a few things a few very good things going for them. Um, uh, actually, if 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 this next three day little closes anywhere above thirty eight hundred, and the last and, and the one that we just set in stone last night actually closed pretty pretty well, uh, pretty well. I mean above the twenty one and above the ten simple. Um, but again, I would not be going against those Stokes uh, as far as price action goes. And, and like I said, to really get an idea of what's going on in lower time frames, we need to well, we need to go to lower time frames. So let's go to the uh, let's go to the four hour delta time frame right here. And I'm gonna put on my drawing tools. And as you can see, this blue box territory has been has been providing rejections, you know, for the last two two and a half weeks. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and uh, most recently nine. Typically speaking, the saying is that the more that you test a resistance or support, the weaker it gets. But at the same point in time, I mean, this this is starting to look a lot tired to me. We're seeing all of the medium to we're, we're seeing like all the medium to low time frame also to start to switch around. This is your four hour Stokes. Four hour Stokes are headed healthily down. Let me get rid of this guy. Uh, not too appropriate right now. Uh, what about the uh, six hour? Six hour are down. Eight hour are down. Ten hour are down. Twelve hour are down but not fully confirmed yet um could still snake around if we had like a you know a hundred dollar move to the upside fifty two hundred dollar move to the upside from here um but i think that that's less likely again when you see all those start to turn around at the same time that typically is where you know where where, where you get your nice moves from not only that but we actually do have some nice bearish divergence going on i believe on every time frame below maybe a four uh what we definitely have it on a four hour yeah one two three stabs on a four hour but what about a six hour do we have any on a six hour we we do we do right here right here but i think that that's already you know if you were playing that it probably played out what about the eight hour eight hour does not so yeah it goes all the way up to a six hour then is the highest time frame still does t uh, technically produce some pretty damn good moves so um you know if, if you want to make a formation out of this i would say that we are operating in an ascending broadening wedge which is typically a bearishly resolved pattern um support right here at about 3860 if you're playing the very small time frames uh this is a two hour right here um, and resistance, you know, I'd basically say is, is we could just say the 30, the 39, 40-ish area um, that we've been looking at. So again, if we actually did break this guy to the downside below 38.60, I would be looking towards a move towards this area around 38.20, which will be meeting up with the daily 21 pretty damn soon. So we will have some good confluences between that area. And it just means that it's going to take less and less to actually get this guy um, to confirm some more downwards momentums. But until that happens, can't really run with that assumption. It's just, you know, projecting, doing doing very bad technical analysis by projecting a potential move and then saying I'd respond to it. Of course, we can't do that. Can only respond to what price action actually does. And right now, we're just in a range. Um, with everything coming down, to be fair. Now, I say that, and actually, we did just get the 10-hour dildo golden cross right here. But I'm going to show you, and as we've seen with the 4-hour, the 6-hour, and the 8-hour, I mean, they're all they're all basically the same, but the 10-hour uh, dildo golden cross has not been that good in the past year. It's not been that good in the past year. And this is what I mean about taking, when you take bullish indications in a bearish market, that's not typically does not <laughs> typically does not bode well tape taking bearish indications in a bearish market typically indicates very very well but the last time that we actually had a uh, a golden cross and again I'm, I'm referring to the green 50 and the, and the purple 200 was right here on the bull trap of uh, 8400 in july uh, july august of last year and it just got this very last gasp for air in fact this golden cross quite literally called the top Funnily enough, it called the top, and then once we broke down below the, the green 50 right here, or even below the yellow 21, it was straight on to the downside of the range. The time before that was right here in 
same sort of idea, actually getting a little bit of that last rally. But once we broke back below the 21, that became resistance all the way down through. And the time before that, we were golden crossed pretty much all the way from... Yeah, pretty much all the way from about like one thousand dollars to to twenty thousand dollars. So, uh, in a bull market, really fucking powerful, super powerful. In a bear market, not so much, not so much. And we are certainly still in a downwards market. So, yes, while te technically speaking, I would I would consider that quite a powerful thing. Um, it has not had a good track record history. In, in, the, in the past year, which, again, until the macro uh, perspectives are taken out, I will still run with the assumption that we are in an overall bear, bearish market. So with that said, I do want to remind myself and remind uh, perhaps you out there that this area is not just be held in by that 89 exponential that is providing the impetus for all these resistances here, but also the 236 Fibonacci retracement. You also do see these nice horizontal trend lines coming around here, forming that order block that we've been looking at, essentially a supply supply block, if you want to call it that, um, if you want to get like super technical. Um, we can also see that there are several uh, higher time frame confluences in this area as well. We can go to the two-week dollar time frame and see that the red 10 symbol on the two-week, which has been holding price action back for the last over a year, the last time that we were actually even opening and closing weekly dildos above it, sorry, two-week dildos above it, was literally in January of last year, so more than, literally more than a year. Uh, we are right there right now. Where is that level coming in around? 3,900. 3,900 providing a nice resistance. And looking at this guy right here, these the, the yellow 21 and the green 50, uh, crossing the downside of each other and gaining momentum away from each other does tell me that as long as you're below all these major moving averages, I would be bearish overall. Uh, of course, this could change if uh, if, if this next two-week total actually regains and closes above the, uh, the 10 simple, but that does not undo... That, or that that doesn't do it just yet. I need to see both an open and close above this area to actually change around the perspective, and that would you know likely lead into a, a nice move into you know well deep into the uh, four thousands. I'd imagine. But for now, I look at this as consolidation. Look at the volume signature. Look at the price structure. I think this becomes a little bit more uh, visibly apparent on a three-day total time frame. You can see this right here. Very corrective, very corrective price structure, and uh, and the volume signature just confirming that fact. As far you know, as far as I see it, a nice orderly drop off in volume going from left to right. That's what you know. That's that's exactly what I like to see. So <clears throat> that to me is saying that this likely is the right way to be looking at this uh, this consolidation as a whole. I mean, just one nice triangular consolidation as uh, as the bearish indications start to slowly but surely grind their way down that would likely be the impetus for this uh this um formation breaking to the downside being resolved to the downside we could also go to the monthly the monthly very important as well and you see that the monthly 50 the green 50 exponential coming in right around here as well bitcoin breaking that 50 exponential for the first time in its history literally in its history in um december we bounced off of it in november that's what held it up in november but December lost it, and we have been unable to regain it ever since then. One, two, three strikes. And uh, yes, we are technically, I, well, we're, we're technically not above it right now. I'm using BLX index, which is uh, updated like very slow. If we go over here to to stamp, it's going to be it's going to be a lot less. Um, but that's coming in right around 38, you know, 90 ish area. So again, another thing kind of coinciding with that fact and also showing us that there is major resistances coming around this level. And then as long as we're respecting this 50, I do look at this as the more pressure on mentality. And I think this is very visually apparent when we look at the monthly as a consolidation as well. And look at this red 10 simple and the yellow 21 exponential approach each other which will cross on the next tick if we end anywhere below i mean i mean really anywhere below four thousands but the pressure is going to be on as long as we're below 5200 basically where the basically where the 21 is so again uh looking at something like that that would be you know it's it's gonna it's gonna likely intensify all of the bot and algorithmic selling which could very easily send this consolidation down to the next level which i would be you know again looking towards a 2500 level um of course i just did a very long-term analysis uh video uploaded yesterday so check that one out if you want the full -on explanation of all my downside targets um if they're to happen and also explanations on you know why i don't believe that bitcoin's bottomed um and also explanations on how i would change my mind if if bitcoin were if Bitcoin if Bitcoin actually exhibited different behaviors, what would what would I need to see? Which we could actually go over here very quickly, but basically running with the assumption that that the lows are not in. What I need to see for Bitcoin to change my to change my mind around is I need to see uh, a weekly total both open and close above this purple 200 exponential moving average right here, and I mean both open and close, and that is 4100 uh, about right now. If we could do that, that would drastically change my tune, but not necessarily get it done. The next thing would would immediately change my tune. Uh, 
closing a monthly above the yellow 21 exponential around 5200 again this is what i use in traditional marks to judge if a stock if an equity was generally bullish or generally bearish um over a long period of time and you can even see in the history of bitcoin like the last time that we were actually below it it was once we regained it that was the beginning of your bull market um and then also the last and uh, most important but you're probably going to know beforehand this is the most traditional way of doing it is if bitcoin gets back above the six thousand area right here uh, that's the area that it spent so much time consulting around and going sideways around for about a year that if we were to actually pop back above it that would be it would just mean in my mind there's zero reason to be uh, bearish on bitcoin anymore and i am a long-term believer in bitcoin so it's not like i think that bitcoin's going to be below this area for forever but i do think that this is going to take a long time uh and when i say a long time i mean being below six thousand for a long time uh you know i i think it could be like another year or so before before bitcoin sees six thousand again um i don't have a strong opinion on that to be honest with you but it's just this i, I think people really discount how long this next phase of the mark cycle can really take um even if bitcoin has bottomed out right here it's very likely if, if it has bottomed out right here it's likely that we probably go sideways at the very least for you know another uh, i mean at the very least a half year but i'd say probably a full year uh if this is going to be the bottom but if we do work lower then it's probably you know it's just going to put in more time right uh just for for reference sake when bitcoin put in the last low of the last market cycle it went sideways uh, for about uh, about 10 months from january 2015 to october 2015 yeah um and market cycles are going to likely take longer as as the uh, as the asset matures as more people get involved as there's more you know liquidity in the overall market cap as the market cap grows essentially uh, there's just going to be more people to you know shift through so it just takes more time uh, as you can see i mean each and every market cycle gets shorter or sorry longer <laughs> wrong slip of tongue right there anyways uh back onto the bitcoins so we talked about the higher time frames we talked about what i need to see to change my mind we talked about the lower time frames um we talked about bearish divergence we talked about uh jewel actually gave a perfect sell on the on the high last night right here this th okay i would not okay this is technically this is one step away from being a perfect perfect uh, i'd want to see it like up in this range but this is a pretty fucking good signal right here um and it caught this move right here before this down and i would actually be looking at this to probably have some more follow through this is getting respected right now so if you do have access to the jewel look at that as a as an example as an example of a very decent one it's not fully perfect but damn decent and the reason why I make these distinctions between like fully perfect and like pretty, pretty good and, 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 and you know, all these different uh, venues is because the jewel is very, when everything lines up, those are the ones, those are the fucking ones that I take without question. Anything else I, you know, I, I treat it like, I treat it like any other indication really. So yeah. Um, so that's what we've seen there. What about the four hour? Would you have anything on the four hour? Um, not really. I mean, trending below the exponential on the RSI, you know, four hour stokes, we saw us coming down, uh, six hour stokes coming down. Did we lose the 21 exponential on the last tick? No, we did not. No, we did not. Um, but this, you know, this formation right here typically does get, get results to the downside. We do see, you know, jewel kind of switching around. Not really. Well, again, I, I don't consider that a signal. Um, let's go check out CMEs. Uh, CMEs definitely had the gap fill last night and look at that, you know, opens, uh, where did we open up at? What do we open up at? I'm curious. Yeah, open opened actually a little bit above 38.85, um, and then trout, and then yeah, we bounced off that. We actually opened right up on the gap. Now, didn't we? Bounced up off the gap and then straight down. So yes, whenever I see, so that's you know when I was talking yesterday about looking for a trade based off the CME open. That actually was a trade. It bounced. It, sorry, it's um. When it when it opened a little bit up, it came back down, filled um, filled that gap, and then bounced up to 39 above 3900. That's when you saw a spot get to 3910 yet last night, and then came back down. So that was just you know a little bit of a bounce. So again, why I don't like taking counterindications, um, as that trade obviously did not have too much edge on it. I mean like maybe what like 40 bucks actually not too bad i mean in this market right now 40 bucks is not too bad but um not not like a full winner the fact that we're living below it right now after filling it is is not a good sign uh, typically though um also by the way on the cmes we all we actually do see the same sort of resistance being formed in this area uh you can see that these the, the last couple of daily dollars have are, are looking like rejections but this rejection coming off of this trend line going all the way back to late november which has governed every last high one two three four five and these are all lower highs at the 382 fibonacci retracement as well so again um not a good thing we do have our daily stokes uh kind of uh, snaking around a little bit but not not all that much 
not doing too much. Uh, four hour stokes are down after giving a false signal. Uh, bearish divergence all the way through. Um, how high does this go up to? Uh, we got a six hour right here. Yeah, six hour is showing bearish divergence as well. Um, and a rejection right at the right at the trend line at 3,900. So again, I would be making decisions based off that. And I do see that uh, spot is actually it's actually drooping down a little bit right now. I'm um, gonna give this uh, trend line another test. 3860. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. We might get some action today. Again, it has been the one week. It has been the one week anniversary since the last move. So you never know. You never know. Um, GBDC will be open later today, so we don't have too many uh, anything say, any other things that that haven't been said uh, during this past weekend. Right at re uh, close Reddit resistance will be forming a lower high if we do turn around down here. But if I was just looking at GBDC, I wouldn't be bullish. Actually, if I, I would be bullish just looking at GBDC. Um, let's go look at Mrs. Litecoin. Let's go look at the other top shit coins. I'm curious what they're doing. Mrs. Litecoin fun finally coming down. Yes, we've been looking up uh, for this for a long time. Um, you know, calling tops in this area, and yes, I do believe that we're you know we're, we're we're likely to see down around this 52 and a half, uh, 52 and a half dollar region. Um, this is, is in sunny broadening wedge finding one, two, uh, final tops right here. Bearish divergence on the daily three strikes, one, two, three and down and daily stokes are getting tired in the more critical range as well. And because Mrs. Litecoin did lead the market up to the upside, I would <laughs> redone it as fuck. Um, I would be looking for her to be signaling, you know, when the market wants to come back down and, uh, not necessarily confirming, you know, not necessarily confirming a change of trend just what yet of the macro trend, but in the, you know, in, in the lower time frames, we do have, you know, we did have a nice uptrend now coming back down. Um, I do believe that this has some more room to move down. And like I said, about $52.5, where to come be looking towards. Uh, let's see what our four hour stokes are. Let's see what our four hour oscillator is looking like. Yeah, four hour, four hour stokes coming coming down for our RSI, giving you bearish, what significant bearish divergence all the way through. I mean, the move is, you know, the time to get in the move was yesterday, really. Uh, but that's why we do videos every day. Moves happen all the time, my friends. Um, yeah, and we, I mean, really nothing new to say here. I mean, we're just seeing, we're just seeing what we've been speaking about for the last, you know, couple of days actually play out. Um, let's go check out Mr. Buterall, Mr. Buttersworth. What's he doing? Uh, definitely the weakest of the top three, as usual, uh, getting beat up. Um, major support right here, 135. Needs to hold above 135 or big problems. I wouldn't say big problems, but I'd be looking for a move down to about 127 and a half if that were to happen, 128, something like that, right around here. Uh, maybe even give this rising support trend line that's been going all the way down, for, or sorry, that's been going all the way since uh, middle of December, since the lows were put in so far. Uh, give that guy a test at around 123 and a half, 124. You know, anywhere down around here would kind of make sense. Um, you know, if we actually even came back and retested this trend line, you see this trend line going all the way from May that that uh, that happened uh, around 820 last year. Uh, if we came back and retested that after breaking out of it a couple, you know, two, three weeks ago, I would probably put it down around your former low at around 105. Um, so again, Mr. Buterall, you know, definitely, definitely the weakest of the bunch. Uh, in order for him to really like get some bull momentum going, you need to see him get above. Oh, you bastard. You just moved without me looking. You fucker, Bitcoin. How dare you? Uh, would need to get above 143 and a half. But again, I, I don't think that that's, like I said, in a bear market, to be bearish. You know, I, I don't think that that's the right way to be looking at this thing right now. Um, let's go back to Mr. Bitcoin and we just, looks like we just saw a move below 50 bucks. Yeah. 38, 45, not bad. Going to be floating around with this uh, trend line right here. Um, but again, I, I made this on a two day or sorry, two hour dildo time frame, So it needs to be respected here. Uh, you can see that the two, that the 200 symbol is holding price action up on this time frame as well. And if we do get another wick like this, I mean, I'd be looking for another hunt back into this region to be honest with you. You know, this, this can take its time. I, I'd imagine that when U S markets open up, uh, U S equity markets open up later, um, that's when things probably start, started, start to get moved again. Anyways, um, oh yeah, I have no positions or anything like that. I close. You, you guys saw me close my positions yesterday. I, I, I really don't like trading and holding positions on weekends. And this morning when I woke up, I, you know, I, I really wanted this guy right here. I didn't want to enter in lower, so I'm not really in, in any hurry to, to enter in position right now. Um, so cool. Uh, let's go check out traditional markets as it will be opening later today. And traditional markets bounced bounced uh, to close the week out, but. We do have, and, and remember, we do have a daily total golden cross going on right here, the green 50 and the purple 200. And we actually did regain on the closure uh, the 200 simple moving average as well, which is very powerful to me. This is this is all very good, and I would respect this cross as long as we're as long as we're above 271 and a half. As long as we are above 271 and a half, I would not be. <sighs> 
I would be looking for the next leg down, but I, I don't like going against the daily total golden cross. Uh, I do think that we probably get a rally back up somewhere around 170 or sorry, 277, maybe 279 if things get a little bit crazy. And that would be where I look to take on a, on a position. Um, my personal opinion is that this does come back down, but, um, you know, first things first, we got to play out a little bit of a bounce off this area, which is likely to have some, uh, some, 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 you know, some, some good juice behind it. Uh, daily is going to be coming down to the neutral zone. So I'd imagine, you know, you probably do get a little bit of uh, activity there. Same thing with the Stokes. So a lot of the time you'll see people just buy based off that. And with the daily dole golden cross and regaining the 200 simple is a big deal to me. So I would be looking on it quite honestly for, you know, this to get extended a little bit more and then probably sold into once again, of course, from the higher time from perspective, I would not be bearish on spy at all whatsoever from like a reversal standpoint you know back on to prior lows or beyond or beyond the prior lows uh until until the weekly violates about 264 i believe it is yeah right here you can all see that the weekly uh, 21 exponential having have, you know providing support right around that 271 uh, area as well so a lot of things coming around this area I would not be bearish unless that area was broken. And I think that we bounce off of it first before before we coming back and retesting it. If we come back and retest it, that's where it becomes, it becomes a lot more likely. But for now, the bounce is looking fine to me. Looking fine. Barring any, like, unless if we open the day, like, extremely down, I would not. I, I think that I think that it bounces up first. Um, okay. All right. So let's actually go down. Let's go back in a lower time frame. I'm curious how they look. Yeah. Hourly, hourly having a good strong bounce at the end of the day, you know, hourly resistance is going to be right around here, right around about two, six, two seventy six and a half, two seventy seven. Maybe that's worth a trade. We do have a little bit of a gap on the lower time frames. Uh, lower time frame Stokes will be turning as well. So I do like, uh, I do like the overall read on this a little bit of bullish divergence coming off the low too. Um, so I, I, th I think it's good for a bit more. Um, the question is how much, uh, like I said, I'll try trades around 276 and a half, 277. And then if that gets taken out 279, a little bit above 279, if that gets taken out, well, maybe it's time to go back and do a bull market then if that, if that happens, but for now, uh, it's got a lot of work to do. Um, so I, I do want to make that perspective available. Uh, let's go look at uh, BNB, Binance shitcoin, and actually one of the better, one of the better acting coins of the past year, completely doing its own thing. Uh, coming down as well. I, I don't think that this one's immune from the from the market's movements. Just looking at my other screen over here, got a nice like curved screen now, so I'm really ha really excited about that. I've joined the curved gang, and it's amazing. I'm so proud to be here. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, daily on uh, on BNB, you know, Stokes coming down. It, it it looks like it wants to come down to me. Uh, Thirteen and a half would be the would be the next support. I do think that overall comes down further to about twelve and a quarter. Uh, daily jewel is not signaling a short, but it could line up for one if if we put in some time grinding this top and actually exhibit some characteristics of distribution. Then it, it's usually really fucking good at getting those. Like, and those are the ones that I want to be getting because those are the major reversals. Um, but for right now, yeah, I'd say about 13 and a half probably do get a bounce right around there. How we react off that bounce is going to be the next big tell. Uh, let's go check out Zcash, the real Bcash, or is it really? <laughs> oh my God, man. Disgusting. Uh, below all major movement averages in the, in the context of a descending triangle. Not good. Bcash, below all major movement averages in the context of a descending triangle. Not good. <laughs> Tron Cash. I don't know what the fuck you call this, but it's not good. <laughs> uh support right here at about 2.19 cent uh basically the 200 simple uh as long as you're above that yeah maybe this morphs into maybe this morphs into some mm, maybe gets given a chance but uh the second that you break that more importantly i would be looking for a move down to about 1.9 um if if it were to take back out uh, two and a half cents to the upside, that's where this picture becomes a lot more rosy for the lower time frames. But I do think that this one comes down further. Although, you know, yeah, actually I do. Uh, daily stocks are, are already tired. <laughs> it's bad, man. Um, daily RSI getting beheld in by the exponential, uh, being harassed. What about Neo Cash? Neo Cash, one of the better actions as well, but starting to just, you know, roll it over as well. Uh, what, what about EOS cash, EOS cash, same sort of thing, rejected too many times at the 200 simple at $4. As long as you're below $4, I would not be bullish on this guy. Um, XRP cash, uh, in a descending triangle as well, below all major movement averages. Again, just another rejection at this descending triangle resistance trend line. We've been looking at this for, I mean, since we had this in since, since January, we've just been seeing it 
provide excellent trades time and time again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, seven pretty damn good trades uh, taking scalps off the resistance of that guy. Now, of course, could it break to the upside? Absolutely. If it breaks above, uh, what is it now? If it breaks above, we could say about one and a half cent. Or sorry, 30. Oh, wow. Breaks above one and a half cent. We're going to go to 1.67 cent. No. Uh, if it breaks above about 31 and a half cent, I would be looking for a move to about 33 and a half cent. That doesn't necessarily change the overall picture. The overall picture change changes for the more, for the more rosy if this thing can get back above 34 and a half cent. Um, but uh, as you can see, got a lot of work to do. And this is a bearish pattern. And if we do break 28 and a half cent uh, to the downside, I would be looking for a move to the downside of the range. Actually, uh, low 20s, high teens. Um, Monero Cash. Where's my Monero Cash? There you are. Monero Cash, what are you doing? Uh, not in a descending triangle and above some moving averages, actually. Not bad. But, you know, if the, if the rest of the market's going to be rejected right here, Monero's probably going to be too. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean... That this is why there's no point to looking at the fucking altcoins. I mean, I do this just to kind of show, but actually Stellar doing its own thing and make, make me just hold my words for one second here. There we go. Breaking above the nine and a half cent region. And that's exactly what we're talking about. A quick move to 11 cents or just below 11 cents, actually about 10 and a half cents. But yeah, right around here, I guess, I guess I kind of judged that a little bit. Uh, I judged that a little bit wrong. It wasn't 11 cents that it moved to is 10.8 cents, but the numbers get so small that I don't even really look at it. I think this actually does try higher too. Um, probably is going to back off this area first and foremost and try to try to uh, consolidate lower. But I do think that overall it probably does try higher. You actually did get a pretty good signal on the jewel right here. Uh, not a perfect signal by any stretch of the imagination, but decent enough for something like this when you have your when you have your daily stokes turning as well. I like that. Um, so yeah, so we looked at all those guys. Uh, we looked at uh, Mrs. Litecoin, looked at Mr. Buterall. Let's go back to Mr. Bitcoin. We'll start to wrap this bitch up. Uh, I want to be respectful of your time as I did get a little bit of a later start. And as you can see, we are once again, you know, putting a nice wick below this uh, support. So I'd imagine, you know, if, if this guy closes above, which it does look like, it, it does look like we had another decent reaction off the uh, 200 simple that we're probably going to get another move back up uh, to the top of the range and test that area. Um, again, 41 minutes to go. So a lot of things can happen uh, within that time frame, but you know, it's it, it's it's been the same story all week, right? Every time that you get a wick below here or a wick above here, those have been the good trades, uh, whether it's buying or selling. Uh, yes, at some point this this will give out. Yes, at some point I do believe it will. <laughs> I, I I mean, it looks to me like it wants to break out to the downside, but we can spend some more time in this area, uh, some more time in this range. There's no real like time limit, right? So yeah, um, I think that that pretty much does it. Probably a shorter video today, as I did get a little bit of a later start myself. Um, but to kind of wrap it up again, from the medium time frame perspective for Mr. Bitcoin, as long as we're below the 21 X or sorry, as long as we are below, uh, 3940 and above 3810, nothing's changed from that perspective. If we, if we do break above 3940, I would be looking for a move towards about 4,200 and probably beyond. Um, if we do break below 3810, I would be looking for a move to about 3650 ish area, 3700, and then probably to the downside of this, uh, of this range somewhere around 3400. So again, uh, nothing's really changed from that perspective perspective we are showing bearish divergence on all time frames below a six hour um and this is starting to look more and more and more like a an ascending brawny wedge which is typically a bearishly resolved pattern but needs to confirm at least a two hour delta below 3860 if it can do that then yes the next support would be about 38 uh, 10 38 20 which is going to likely coincide have that confluence with our um you know obviously our uh, our daily 21 which is what i'd be making decisions off of right now for the medium time frame perspective perspectives Anyways, that's going to do it for right now. Um, another another day of the same fucking range is what it really is. So, yeah. <laughs> Probably going to be another clickbait title as well, so I do apologize about that. But, of course, it's a, it's all about the clickbait titles, and then and then I and then I try to do the best uh, possible video that I can do. So, that's how I justify it. I'm not really, I'm not, uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm not like, you know, uh, what's the word? Um, I'm not like proud to do clickbait titles, but it is, uh, it is a YouTube way. So I do apologize about that, but hopefully I can make up with it some, with some good information anyways. Um, yeah, keep your eyes on the lower time frames right now. They are the ones that are going to be the, uh, going to be the guides. Uh, if this two hour close is above 3860, I do think that we'll probably get another test back around the, uh, the upside of the range. And then the game can, can, can continue once again. We'll probably, uh, probably once us markets open up, that's when I'd look for, you know, potential market shifting moves as we are in that week cusp as well. Anyways, that's going to do it for this morning. I'm going to be back, back on later with some more live stream action. Looking forward to seeing you there. If not, well, I want to wish you a very happy very and a very uh, very uh, special, just the best of the best Tuesday, or 
Tuesdays, Mondays, Mondays possible. Um, and uh, take care.